A counter is a special case of a finite state machine, and it is one that tends to traverse through the states in a linear fashion, and it also is one in which each state is going to have a specific output that we can use to actually encode the states. So it's going to allow us to minimize some of the output logic in, uh, in the system. So the best way to learn a counter is to just do an example. So let's do an example of a two-bit binary up counter. Okay? And let's go ahead and talk about the word description. So the word description here, word description, and we won't write it out too much, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to make a system that outputs uh, a counter that's two bits, and it's a binary counter, and it counts up, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and then it'll just roll over and continue, and it'll just count indefinitely. So it's, it's binary up. Now, this is the description of this is that it doesn't, you don't have any controls over it. It's not like you can count up and then count down. So it doesn't have any inputs. So the block diagram of this will look like it's going to have a clock, and every time you get a rising edge of a clock, you will increase the count by one. And let's call the count CNT, and we'll just make it a two-bit vector. So we'll have two, two scalars that come out, and we'll call them CNT1 and CNT0, and those will be our outputs. So this is a, an interesting situation because it's a state machine that doesn't have any inputs. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the state diagram. And the simplest way to do a counter is to have each state represent one of the count outputs. And then what we'll do is we'll just create a system, an output logic that takes the current state and encodes it in a, in a manner that is the output. So let's take a look at that. So let's do, let's have four states in the system. So we'll call it C0 for count zero. And then what we'll do is we'll have C1, and then we'll have C2, and we'll have C3. And what we'll do is we'll just simply, every rising edge of a clock, we'll just move over and traverse through the states. So this right here is where you see this characteristic behavior of a counter. So notice it, it moves linearly through a counter. Okay? And, and this is only a two-bit counter that only has four values, but imagine you had like a 32-bit counter that's counting up to billions. And in most of the time, it is traversing linearly through. Okay? Now, that's not to say that you couldn't build a system that is going and then you can set it to a particular value. But uh, most of the time, it's traversing linearly. So that's kind of the definition of a counter. The other big thing about a counter is that the outputs, we can encode the states such that the current state code is the value of the output that you want. So here's an example. So when I'm in C0, I want an output of, I want to have CNT be 00. zero. So I can actually come into here and I can say when I'm in the state, I'm going to say CNT is equal to 00. zero. Now there's a few things to notice here. I put the output value in parentheses to, note, to denote that it's an output, but I, note, I put it inside of the state bubble. That is how you indicate that this is a more type machine, meaning that the outputs only depend on the current state. So if I have outputs that depend on the current state and the inputs, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them out next to the transition edge because that's where the inputs are going to be listed. For this situation, this is a more type machine, meaning that I don't, I don't have any inputs in this, but even if I did, I don't care. I'm going to only base the output value on the current state. So I put it inside the bubble. Again, I put it in parentheses so that I denote it's an output. Okay, so then when I'm in C1, I'm going to say CNT is equal to 0, 1. And then I'm going to say CNT is equal to 1, 0. And then over here, I'll do CNT is equal to 1, 1. And there you go. There's a state diagram for this. If we come along and now do the state transition table, I'm going to put all of this information in here in a tabular format. But this time, I know that I'm going to immediately synthesize right after. So I'm going to leave some room in the table so that I can so I can come back in and put my state codes. And so let's go ahead and make the table, and we'll make it big enough so that, uh, so that we have room to come back. OK, so we're going to list the current state, put current state, and we'll go ahead and put a line like this. 
<coughs> and then we're going to put a line like this, and I'm going to write the actual variable name. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is I'll have the descriptive name of the state, so C0, and then I'll have C1, and then C2, and then C3. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm in room right here in this region right here because I'm going to come back and put the state codes in. So then I'm going to put next state here. And what I'll do is I'll list the descriptive state name of where I'm going. So when I'm in C0, I'm going to C1. When I'm in C1, I'm going to C2. C2, I'm going to C3. When I'm in C3, I'm going back to C0. Okay. And then I'll give myself some room because I'm going to come back and put the state codes in there for the next state, or the state variables for next state. And then I'm going to put my outputs over here. Okay, and then the outputs, what I'm going to do is I'll list it as C and T as a 2-bit vector, and then I'll just say when I'm in C0, the output's going to be 0, 0. When I'm in C1, it's 0, 1. When I'm in C2, it's 1, 0. When I'm in C3, it's 1, 1. Okay, and let's see. Let's go ahead and draw some lines in here just to make it a little bit more readable. And we are ready to go. So I've just done my state transition table. Okay, and notice I haven't put in the codes. Okay, so now I'm ready to synthesize this. So I want to synthesize this, and I start by state memory. So the first thing I do when I come back, and I'll kind of I'll kind of come over here and try to keep it on one page. So the state memory, remember the first thing that you do is you assign the state codes. <clears throat> so I want to say what are my state codes. Now this is where <coughs> you use a technique called state encoded outputs. So state encoded outputs. And this is a technique that's very common in counters and it's one of the ways that you can minimize the logic. So what I want to do is I have C0, C1, C2, and C3 and I want to assign them state codes. Remember that it's arbitrary the way that you assign the state codes. You can assign anything you want, binary, grade code, one hot, or any arbitrary code. But what I want to do is I want to encode the states with the actual output itself. And in this case, it's, it's simply a binary count. But what I want to do is I want to say C0, if I make the code for C0 equal to the output code, what that I want, C and T is equal to 0, 0. And then I fill in the table like this. When I'm in C1, I'll make the code 0, 1. When I'm in C2, I'll make it 1, 0. And when I'm in C3, I'll make it 1, 1. If I encode the states like that, what I can do is I can just make the output logic just wires. I can just say C and T over here is going to be nothing more than the current state. So I can eliminate my output logic. And we'll see how you do that as we go to the, through the synthesis. So that's called state encoded outputs. And that's a very important concept in counters. Okay, so the final step of this is, or excuse me, the uh, next step is how many D flip flops do you need? Well, you're going to need two D flip flops because you have two bits in your state code. And then finally, we need to come up with some state variable names. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and put these over in the table now. So I'm going to have two state variable names for current state, and I'm going to call them Q1 cur, and I'm going to call the other one Q0 cur. So those are my state variable names for the current state codes. And I'll go ahead and fill in the table here. So I'll have 0, 0. So when I'm in C0, my state code is 0, 0. When I'm in C1, it's 0, 1. When I'm in C2, it's 1, 0. When I'm in C3, it's 1, 1. And then we'll come over here, and let's do our next state variable names. <coughs> and let's call it Q1 next and Q0 next. And then we come over here and let's fill in the value. So C1 is equal to 0, 1. C2 is equal to 1, 0. C3 is equal to 1, 1. And C0 is equal to 0, 0. <coughs> so now I'm done. I'm essentially done with my state memory synthesis. I know I'm going to have two D flip-flops. And I can just draw them in the logic diagram right now. But my table is complete. So the key here was, was knowing that we were going to come back and fill in the actual state codes that for the state variables for the current state and the next state. So I left a little room there. Okay, and that's how you do the state transition table. That's how you're able to use the same table for both steps. Okay, so I'm, I'm going along here, and now I'm ready to synthesize the next state logic. So let's see if we can do it right down here. Okay, so I'm going to do the next state logic. And the question is, what is the next state logic? Like, what am I trying to do? 
Well, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build a, a combinational logic circuit that will produce these two values, Q1 next and Q0 next. So what I need to do is I need to derive a logic expression for Q1 next. Remember that a logic expression only has a scalar output, so it only controls one bit. And then I'm going to derive a logic expression for Q0 next. So I'm going to have two logic expressions. The question then becomes, what are the inputs? What inputs do I have on my combinational logic circuit? Well, it turns out there are no inputs to the system. What these output or these next state variables depend on are the current states. So these right here are the inputs into my next state logic. So let's go ahead and just put it directly to a K-map. Now this, of course, is a simple example. We actually might be able to minimize something in here, but it's a very simple example because there's only two bits. And look at the table here, 00011011. That was not by accident. That just, it's exactly like a true table where this is formal, you know, this is a formal binary count, like rows 0, 1, 2, 3. And then, and that's why it's nice to encode binary. Okay, so anyway, let's just go, let's just go synthesize this. So we're going to come along, and what I want to do is, let's put the first one, Q1 next, into a K-map. And you can see right away, it's not going to really, really do much for us. So Q1 next, and I'm going to come down here and do a two input K-map. And the inputs are going to be Q1 cur, Q0 cur. And we got 0, 1, 0, 1. So I pop these babies in here. 0, 1, 1, 0. 0, 1, 1, 0. You immediately notice you can't do any groupings. So the logic expression is not very powerful. I'll draw it in blue so it sticks out. So Q1 next is going to be nothing more than Q1 cur board with, oh excuse me, anded with Q0 cur not, so that's that prime implicant, and then ORD with Q1 cur not, anded with Q0 cur. So you have a logic, a sum of products of logic expression. You also probably notice that that's an exclusive OR gate, so 0, 1, 1, 0. So you could just do Q1 cur exclusive OR with Q0 cur. So these two are equivalent logic expressions. Okay. So we have no logic, uh, no minimization there. There's really nothing other than recognizing an uh, exclusive OR gate. Let's go ahead and try to squeeze in our next one. So now I want to, I built this circuit. Now I want to build this circuit. So I come in and I'm going to derive the logic expression for Q0 next. Now let's put it in a two variable K map, two input K map. The inputs that I care about are, or that it depends on are Q1 cur and Q0 cur. And we'll put them in the value 0, 1, 0, 1. And let's pop these in here, 1, 0, 1, 0. So I go 1, 0, 1, 0. This one I can minimize a little bit. So I can group these together and come up with one prime implicant. So I'm going to have, I'm going to be able to exclude Q1 cur, because the circle covers a region where Q1 cur is both a 0 and a 1. And the actual prime implicant is just Q0 cur not. OK, so I've done it. I've synthesized my next state logic. OK, so I look at this thing, and I've got my logic expressions there. The last step is my next, or my output logic. So now I'm going to synthesize my output logic. And I say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is the output that I want, OK? I want 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And it depends only on the current state. So you look at this, and it depends only on the current state. Well, notice that the current state, right here, 0, 0, is the exact same thing as the output. And when it's 0, 1, the output's 0, 1. And when it's 1, 0, it's 1, 0. When it's 1, 1, it's 1, 1. That's because we did what we call state encoded outputs. We did this on purpose. So what I can, only, I can do is I can just say that C in T bit 1 is equal to nothing more than Q1 current. And then C in T0 is equal to C Q, or excuse me, Q0 current. So that's the power of, of a counter using state encoded outputs. You don't even need to do the output logic synthesis because you encoded it such that the outputs are going to be simply the current state. Now you could put those into a K-map, 
and you could derive what they're going to be. And if you did it, you'd just you'd come out with these exact logic expressions. But we were able to synthesize that very rapidly. Okay, so now we're all done with this example. So let's draw the final logic diagram. So I'm going to come along and I'm going to draw this final logic diagram. So let's see. I'm going to do this. Let's put it on here. Okay, so my state memory is right here, and I have it drawn, and I'll just we'll zoom in and kind of look at it. Okay, so come along, and my state memory is what? It's 2D flip-flops. But it's not just 2D flip-flops. The 2D flip-flops have state variable names on them. So I use this, this top one to represent the Q1 current and Q1 next. Then I had Q0 current is is Q0 cur and Q1 next. So I had to assign where the state variables were connected. My next state logic is going to be simply for Q1 next, I have the sum of products expression, or I could use the exclusive OR gate. And then for Q0 next, it's simply Q0 cur. Now notice what's nice about, or Q1, Q0 cur not. What's nice about this one is Q0 cur not comes from the QN output of this guy. So you don't actually have to have an inverter in there. You got that for free. Okay, so then what does the output look like? The output logic, like we said, it's state encoded outputs. It's just directly the current state. So these outputs are just nothing more than wires connected to the Q outputs of your D flip flops. So this right here, notice all the output logic is nothing more than wires. And that is how you minimize the complexity of these circuits. So here's what the behavior of this counter looks like. It's as you would expect. You're just going to basically come along, and every time you get a rising edge of a clock, it's going to count. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. So that is a 2-bit binary up counter. 